Hey everybody, welcome back to another playthrough of the campaign, and here we are breaking the fellowship. This is the scenario where Frodo chooses to go into a different direction than the rest of his companions, and I guess the easiest way to say it is that thematically all hell breaks loose. This scenario really tries to capture that and does a, uh, does a pretty good job of forcing you, the player, to make that decision. So as we begin this quest, let's again take a look at the deck and take a look at the campaign log. So with the campaign log here, you can see that I've earned um, five boons and four burdens. Everything's starting to even itself out here. So this can be a little tricky as the burdens come off the encounter deck. Uh, hopefully we don't see too many of them. We go from there. So let's take a look at the deck and see what is going to be highlighted here in the deck. I think that this scenario is starting to get to be the point where questing is good, but you know we're going to have a bunch of enemies now too. So um, you'll see me quest less with Mary and more to use him to reduce my threat. Getting out defenders and attackers early is important. And plus we get the infamous toughness keyword, which in essence cancels the first point of damage that you do to any enemy. So Bilbo is rendered uh, useless in terms of doing damage to enemies, but is still good for questing because you can add the threat of the enemy to Bilbo's willpower. I guess we will get started and I'll go over all the boons and burdens I've earned so far. As we get started, I'm going to take Mr. Underhill. Underhill. My name's Underhill. Underhill. We're friends of Gandalf the Grey. And Attach it to the ring bearer. Old bogey stories gets put on to Samwise. Tireless ranger also gets put on Samwise. He's one of them rangers. And then Sting and Mithril Shirt, like I said in the last scenario, I'm just going to shuffle into my deck after I draw my initial hand. Okay, and then Gandalf's Delay. Oh, I'm sorry, Frodo. I was delayed gets put up here in the staging area or just to the left of the staging area because it doesn't interact with anything throughout the game overcome by grief gets put over here again doesn't interact with anything in the staging area until I until a character is destroyed and I'm gonna take weight of the ring and pursued by the enemy and put them into the encounter deck Okay, now the campaign card says that we're going to start with one of the boons in play. There are four boons in here, and they match up with Galadriel's gift to some of the fellowship. And so there's the, the vial of Galadriel. Farewell, Frodo Baggins. I give you the light of Erendil, our most beloved star. May it be a light for you in dark places when all other lights go out. There's the three golden hairs that Gimli gets. Oh, henceforth I will call nothing fair unless it be her gift to me. What was her gift? I asked her for one hair from her golden head. She gave me three. There's the laureate rope that Sam gets. And for you, Samwise Gamgee, elven rope made of heath lime. Thank you, my lady. And then there's the leaf-wrapped lembus, which is a gift of the elves, not necessarily a gift from Galadriel. Lembus. Elvish waybread. One small bite is enough to fill the stomach of a grown man. How many did you eat? Four. So I am going to actually choose leaf wrapped lembus. And that is a permanent. So I am going to attach that to Sam. I've said it a million times in these playthroughs. It's so hard to not um, tower Sam up. Like, he's just so much fun to play. 
but I've said that all before. So let's uh, let's take these cards and move them up and out of play. And let's draw my opening hand. Okay, I have all allies. I think I'm going to mulligan this and see if I can get a little bit better start. Um, seeing maybe something to defend with or maybe a Gandalf uh, or Red Book of Westmarch or something. Well, I'm happy to see two sneak attacks, but unfortunately I don't get anything that I can use the sneak attacks with, I guess. Um, <laughs> but I do get a test of will also at the very beginning, so that's really nice. So I will now shuffle these into my deck, and I will set this up. Frodo's Choice, Seed of Seeing, Parth Galen aside, out of play. Add the Argonath and San Gabir to the staging area. So there's the Argonath, and this is the Sarn Gabir. And this this is the one that's really a pain in the neck because you have to precision quest here so that you don't, at least with my hobbits, so that way you don't have to uh, take damage when you don't want to. So it's kind of a pain in the neck. So now we will flip the quest card and enemies can't be engaged. Players cannot advance while the Argonath is in play. So here we are. Um, it's very similar to Journey Along the Anduin in terms of feel, but not in terms of gameplay. In Journey Along the Anduin, you get the sense that the enemies are definitely uh, mounting at the shore and trying to, you know, attack you here. It's a little sneakier than that. So let's see how well we can do. I guess we'll start. I think the important thing here is to get Treebeard out. Treebeard, some call me. At the very beginning, there's archery. Not a ton, but some in this scenario. So I want to have at least somebody to be used as a pincushion. And I'm going to use one, two, three, four. Okay, I'm going to trust and hope that I don't draw um, something that I want a test of will. Um, whatever I draw at the very beginning is going to have to um, be okay enough for me to keep in the staging area. Okay, so I guess we're ready to quest. There's nothing about triggers at the quest phase. I just need to make sure that I get through this with minimal enemies in the staging area. Four in the staging area, and I'm going to quest two. I'm questing for ten with all my characters that are available to quest, and let's see what I get. Growing threat. It is not the eastern shore that worries me. A shadow under threat has been growing in my mind. Something draws near. When revealed, either remove one enemy engaged with you from the first player's staging area or growing threat gain surge and doom two. This is like a little foreshadowing of what's going on. In this scenario, as the fellowship breaks apart, we're going to end up having several staging areas. So that's why there's uh, things about the staging area here that's going on. I don't have enemies, so I'm going to have to raise my threat and get surge. This is probably the best time to see this because not only is this a pretty nasty card, but it doesn't have surge. And so to see it now is, is great, but also the shadow effect is super um, challenging when you have to compare the hit points. Um, and then sometimes you have to take an attack on defended. So I actually only raised my threat by two to get through here. And I quested for 10, I YOLO quested. So that's six progress on the current quest. And now I'm going to travel to the Sarn Gabir, and I am going to do a new round. So I am going to put Sting onto Sam. Sting. It's a good name. Sting. Because that is an awesome place to put it. And then I'm going to try to precision quest so that I only put four progress or a little bit more onto the cards this time around. I don't want a YOLO quest because I will end up losing hit points. I get damaged when the Sarn Gabir comes through. So I will quest for four with Sam, and then six for with Treebeard, and there's only one in the staging area. So I'm not sure that that's enough. I'll do Falco for another two. So that's eight versus one. 
When revealed, either choose a player to reveal an encounter card or makes an immediate attack against you. This may be a good time to um, exhaust the one ring, shuffle this guy back into the encounter deck, and see what happens. I can't stand the wooded shoreline because it gets archery too, but that's four progress and I'm able to do exactly four onto the Sarn Gabir. So that means I do a damage to Treebeard and a damage to Sam and a damage to Falco. Just to keep archery out of here, I'm, al I'm also going to travel to the wooded shoreline. Well, all my heroes are hobbits, so I can play Shirefolk. I'm able to put the Red Book of Westmatch out onto Falco Boffin, and I think that I'm going to put the Dagger of Westerness onto Sam. Okay, and I still have some cancellation effects, and I can ready Treebeard, so this is looking pretty good. Okay, so I will quest two, sorry, three. I think I'm going to quest for 13, and I'm up against just one in the staging area. Okay, when revealed, attach the ring bearer at the beginning of each quest phase, either exhaust the one ring or reveal an additional encounter card this phase. <clears throat> so here's the thing. I'm just not even going to try to shuffle that back into the deck. I'm just going to cancel it. Although Fallen into Evil is maybe a better thing to remove from the encounter deck. But let's do the surge. Doomed one surge. Each enemy engaged with a player uh, and not in the staging area makes an immediate attack. And now the surge and I get another wooded shoreline so that's four in the staging area and I make five progress here so I'm almost through I love the art on this particular card I just love how it looks like I don't know the uh, the Anduin River and it's just very serene and peaceful to avoid the uh, archery I'm going to travel to the wooded shoreline and maybe help myself get a little bit more set up. I did quest successfully, so I will give myself an extra lore resource. This peace and thought, so that's good for draw. So I only have one in the staging area. I have four here, so that's five. I need to do six at least. So there's three, so that's ten. And I have some cancellation with the one ring. Either choose a player to reveal an encounter card, or Uruk Hunter makes an immediate attack against me. I think I'm going to let that go. I'm going to take the immediate attack. No shadow. Oh, <laughs> I defend with Treebeard. Treebeard takes a damage because of the immediate attack. I'm going to use Mary to lower my threat. There's three in the staging area. So I make seven. So that's four, five, six, seven. So now I will travel to the Argonath. skip the combat phase. So I can't engage and I can't do combat. I guess the thing to do is to do control R for refresh. And then I will play peace and thought for one. And then I will exhaust. Now I'll draw five cards. And now I will start a new round. I get all sorts of good stuff here. So I'm feeling pretty good about what's going on. So I do get readying, which I will put on Sam immediately. Oh, I quested successfully and I forgot to give myself a resource. I could do it, doesn't affect anything, but I I just feel like it's, since the new round started, I just, I, I don't know. In my head, I have my own little cutoffs for when I can trigger things and when I can't trigger things. And then another dagger. Okay, so now questing. Three, five. And this guy is not counting his threat. So, River Anduin. So that's five versus two. That's four.
remove the ring bearer and each card attached to it from the game. Okay, so I looked this up and it turns out that the ring bearer comes back into play in the same state that he left. So he keeps his resources and all this stuff. So he even stays exhausted. Okay, so this is symbolizing when Frodo goes off and needs to try to separate himself from the company. And it says, reduce the enemy to zero until the end of the encounter phase. Skip the travel phase this round. Flip this over. And at the end of the refresh phase, shuffle C to C. Okay, so that's at the end of the refresh phase. So this guy's going to engage me is what ends up happening. And that's kind of a pain in the neck. But now his engagement cost goes back up. Not that that's anything, but when he engaged me, he had a zero. So it wasn't a modifier. It was set to zero. So Sam doesn't get his bonus for defense. But what I can do, I'll deal this guy a shadow card. Let's see. He is defending for three right now. I will defend with Sam. I do two damage, but his toughness is one, so I actually only do one damage. So that's what toughness is. is it cancels that amount of damage there after the toughness value. So if it's um, toughness two, it'll cancel the first two damage. If it's toughness three, it'll cancel the first three damage. If it's toughness one like this guy, then it only cancels one damage. So I will defend with Sam like I said. And uh, this is the card that you do not want to see. And that's why you keep a test of will for this scenario. It has fallen into evil. And I forget how many there are, but there must be at least two because that's an easy mode one. <laughs> so that one gets uh, removed during easy mode because of the gold uh, rim around the encounter symbols. Nonetheless, I'm glad to see that card as a shadow card. Okay, so Sam is defending for three. I'm going to play this. He's de now defending for five, but then he can also attack this guy back and kill him. So now this is where the kind of the encounter deck goes through some shenanigans. So I'm going to refresh, and I don't have any refresh actions to do, but what I get to do is I get to pick one of the different th stage threes in the game. Before I look at the stage threes, I'm going to make sure that I do all of this stuff um, in the correct order, So because it, it can be pretty dependent on which order I do it in. So I have to shuffle the Seed of Seeing into the encounter discard pile along with Frodo's choice. Now I would love to see the Seed of Seeing because that gets rid of a, a burden in my campaign pool. So that would be really good. But this is the objective that we're trying to figure out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to make kind of its own deck and then do this because I want to shuffle everything here. And then there's a command. I shuffled the the special deck and then I can use this command in Octagon that I get to move all to the bottom of the encounter deck. Frodo's choice and um, the Seed of Seeing are somewhere in the bottom 10 or 11 cards of the deck probably the last card. It's always the way it is. And I kind of want to get to the seat of seeing. If I, if it doesn't come up, that's okay. But I would love to kind of quest slowly enough to kind of see the seat of seeing. So hopefully I can get through the top 20 cards pretty quickly and then the bottom few cards very kind of slowly. So I create my own staging area, which is just me. And then we choose which one we want to go to. All four of these represent four different actions that are going to be happening. So I want to pick up the seat of Amon Hen. That's going to be the one that I want because this is the one that allows me to draw two guards and reduce my threat by two. Because my hobbits are hobbits and they rely on being tricky, having more cards in my hand is probably the better option. So I'm able to um, draw a whole bunch of cards because of this. I will get rid of this. Make sure I did all this on 2B. So I've done everything there and now I'm going to move on to 3A here, the seat of Amon Hen. Um, I have to look at the threat. I have to re reveal one encounter card because I only have two threat in the staging area. So <laughs> Ill fate. Peril attached to a hero control. After 
a character raise your threat by two. So this is actually not a horrible um, burden. I mean, it is kind of horrible, but it's not horrible, horrible, because hobbits have low threat. Of course, my cancellation is out of play right now, so I'm going to have to um, be a little more considerate of my test of will that I have in my hand. Okay, so we'll flip this and see what it says on the other side. If Frodo's Choice is not in play, then I have to discard cards from the encounter deck. So the point here is, is that um, instead of making progress, I'm cycling through the encounter deck until I find Frodo's Choice. So my hope is that we find the Seed of Seeing before we find Frodo's Choice. So we just quest. And so after I quest successfully, I draw two cards and lower my threat by two. Now this, obviously, you can see the benefit of this for multiplayer. If somebody is playing the attacky one and is not worried about questing and then ends up raising his threat a bunch, you know, this is great because I can pick a player across the board to do this. But I don't have to worry about all of those other things, and I want to make sure that I have low uh, threat I only refreshed, I didn't uh, start a new round, so now we get to start a round, and that's what I want to see right there, and now we will quest. <laughs> this is Surge, I forgot to Surge this. Okay, when revealed until the end of the round, add one archery to the total in this stage for each ally currently at this stage. Okay, so I'll put this down here. So, <laughs> this was during the refresh, and so the end of the round is after the refresh, so this fizzles, and now I do the resource, and now, okay, so I'm all caught up. Okay, so now it's just a matter of questing. I'm going to leave Mary up to see if I can uh, maybe lower my threat even more. So there's going to be three. So I'll quest for 12, and there's two in the staging area. The slopes of Amon Hen. That's five. So I make seven progress, so I discard seven cards. So again, I'm trying to get down into the like the 12 cards remaining in the encounter deck because that's going to be right about where the encounter discard pile was shoved underneath the encounter deck. So I did quest successfully, so I will lower my threat by two, and I will draw two cards. It's helpful. And the thing is, is I can't travel here because I don't have any enemies anywhere. So I'm going to have to travel here. Okay, I did forget this trigger. Um, at the end of the last round because there was so much going on. So I will raise my threat now to compensate for that. Okay, so make that the active, and we will do another round here. Okay, so defender, you know, as, as a good defender is Bilbo. But I don't think Bilbo's going to get action advantage, but maybe he will. Um, I do have the leaf-wrapped Lembus, which is nice. So again, I'm going to leave Mary up. I forgot to give myself a resource here. So that's three, twelve again. And there is three in the staging area. Hey, there's an enemy. Surge, toughness one, archery one. Okay, so surge is, till the end of the round, add one archery uh, total for each ally currently at this stage. That's fine. I mean, it's not fine, but it is fine. I'm going to use Mary to lower my threat by one. There's four. In the staging area, so I make eight progress. Five, and then I discard three. Quest successfully, so I draw two cards, and then I lower my threat by two. So now I'm going to travel to the slopes of Amon Hen because that forces me to engage this guy. Well, mainly because I have a guy to engage. And so now that gives that boosts Sam, and Sam is now defending for a whole bunch. Three, five. He's defending for five. Okay, so I will deal a shadow card. Um, I do have archery two that I have to do damage for. Pin cushion, tree beard. I will defend here. No shadow. Enough defense. Oh, let me uh, discard a card, and I do three damage. <laughs> To this guy he's got toughness one so i only do he only gets two and now i will attack with sam back and that kills the urukai tracker and this goes out so i can't play fellowship of the ring i don't have a ring bearer but i can put in odo proudfoot odo proudfoot so i'll get pippin 
I'll put Pippin into play, and I th think I'm feeling pretty good. Okay, so quest three. So I'm questing for 17 with zero in the staging area. So let's reveal. First card is an uruk Archer. Discard an ally control. Okay, <laughs> I'll discard Odo Proudfoot. I'm okay with that. And it's got one threat, so I will make 14 progress. Three here and 11 on the current quest, so I'll remove 11 here. So now I'm getting into the cards that were out in the first stage. So I'm hoping that I don't do go too crazy, but uh, maybe I will. Maybe I did. So I have five more cards to discard. So I discarded the five cards, and I didn't come across Frodo's Choice or the Seed of Seeing. So now I'm going to engage this guy. I'm going to ready Sam. Oh, I quested successfully, so I throw, lower my threat by two. I draw two cards. And I could really use, like, one of my two honor guards or one of my two wardens of healing. Um, but I have to do one damage to somebody, so I guess I will do one damage to Bilbo. Deal this guy a shadow card. I will defend with Sam. Reveal a card. Oh, that's good to see. Um, sting. It doesn't do anything, uh, but it's good to see that a burden is gone and no shadow. Oh no! There's the seed of seeing! This is where Shadow of the Past would be really good. Uh, I just wanted to see the seed of seeing. Oh well. Sam survives the attack. He's defending for five. And so now um, I will attack and kill the Archer. Control N. So there's Build a Pony. I still forgot to add a resource because of the Red Book of West Match. I guess at this point it's just a matter of going through and getting Frodo's Choice. Three. I'll quest for ten. And there's nothing in the staging area. So there's the Anduin River. And so now we discard cards. So I think the way you do it is you discard cards one at a time, not as a group. And so as soon as this becomes discarded, I, I do the one revealed. Okay, so I take control of the ring bearer. And then this becomes attached to the ring bearer. And I do not lose the first player token. Because I'm forced to move on to 4A, I don't get the response of drawing the two cards. So here comes 4A. Add Parth Galen to the staging area. And then it says, end the quest phase, which, guess what? It is the quest phase. So I have to reveal extra encounter cards. And if an enemy is uh, revealed, I get to raise my threat to engage the enemy. So that's why I wanted to lower my threat as much as possible so that I can then engage enemies um, as much as possible. I will travel to the river Anduin because I don't want to raise my threat. And maybe, maybe, maybe I'll get lucky and see the seat of seeing at kind of the top of what's going on here. I did quest successfully. Look, I'm going to remember this time. Okay, so new round. Rosie Cotton. Rosie, you come into play. Rosie caught dancing. She had ribbons in her hair. If ever I was to marry someone, it would have been her. Fellowship of the Ring, you come into play. I am companions. So be it. You shall be the Fellowship of the Ring. Mithril Shirt. 
you come into play. Bilbo had a shirt of mithril rings that Thorin gave him. Oh, that was a kingly gift! Unexpected courage, you come into play. Then everything else is events. So questing. I could YOLO quest right through this right now. And I think I still have cards from when I didn't discard cards. Okay, well, let's do this. Let's quest. So I'll quest for two, sorry, three. Oh, no, I have Fellowship of the Ring in play. So that's four, eight, eleven. I'll quest for seventeen. <clears throat> I get the wooded shoreline. I get another card. Oh, another short. <laughs> so I make four progress here. I, I'm just going to travel to Parth Galen because I'm, I don't want to take all this archery damage. So I will travel to Parth Galen and go find an enemy. Now, this wasn't revealed, so I can't do that, but I can just engage this normally and ready Sam. I have four archery to, to deal with here somehow. So I will do four archery. And I will deal this guy a shadow card. I will defend with Sam. Again, Sam's defending for all five or something silly like that. Plus, I can boost Sam with Rosie and Halfling Determination. And I have all sorts of ways to go about doing this. Oh, I did quest successfully, so I'm going to give myself a resource. So because I'm defending with Sam, I get to reveal an encounter card. Zero. Bummer. So no shadow effect. Sam definitely fends off the attack. I will ready Sam. Then I will attack with Sam for two, four, five, six, seven. And that kills the Uruk Hunter pretty handily. Okay, so, so four, and then I have to make 12, so that's 16, and there is eight in the staging area. So let's see. Let's see if I can catch up to Frodo and hopefully he makes the right choice. So that's 4, 25. Okay, so I have to reveal two cards. Oh, the Seed of Seeing! No! <laughs> no way! Okay, second card is Fallen into Evil, attached to a non... I'm going <laughs> to... Use the one ring and cancel that. Um, actually, that's the better plan, is to take that and just to plain old cancel it. So test of will this back into the into the encounter pile. So four, so 13, I make 12. Is there any way I can remove, is there a response or something that I can't do, that I don't need to do? So that's three, six, seven. Oh, it's even less. Oh, well. There's seven in the staging area. So I make 18 progress. So that's four. Unfortunately, I did see the seed of see seeing, <laughs> but I was playing the odds. What are the chances that I was going to see that the very last turn? I guess that's what I get for YOLO questing. So the seed of seeing tempted me with its effect but i didn't get it bummer okay well let's resolve the campaign here Go back, Sam! I'm going to Mordor alone. Of course you are! And I'm coming with you! It says, if Fallen and Devil is attached, it's not. Okay. First player chooses Followed by Night or Ill Fate. Okay, and what do I do with those? I choose the burden card that's earned. And then each player chooses one hero he controls other than the Ringbearer or Aragorn. Takes and he's taken captive. Okay, so let's see here. So let's do this one. I think I'm going to pick Ill Fate. That's probably the better thing to do. And my captive is going to be Mary.
I think Mary is the best option. So my score is 127. So let's update my campaign log and go from there. So my final score was 127 and today is June 8th and I have earned ill fate and I also have earned leaf wrapped lumbus and the captured Mary. So I'm highlighting that as captured with the black. Okay, well, so now we have to go rescue Mary from the grips of the Urukai. So join us again as we take on the Saga campaign. Have a great day, everybody.